Okay, so for this problem, we're going to be looking at one-dimensional motion problem A, and this is the drunk driver problem. So, public service announcement, not only does drinking impair your judgment, but it also affects your cognitive processing and perception. Imagine a drunk driver heading down the road at 10 meters per second. The stoplight, which is 9 meters ahead of him, suddenly turns red and the cross traffic begins to travel. Because his perception is off, he thinks the light is further than it actually is and only slightly presses the brakes, causing an acceleration of 5 meters per second, and that's squared. 5 meters per second squared, and that's in magnitude. Does he stop before he gets to the cross traffic? So, like with our process with one dimensional motion, we're going to identify that object of interest. So, what is our object that we care about the motion for? Well, that's the driver. All right, and then we need to define that initial and final. What time of the motion do we really care about? What begins our motion? What ends our motion? And again, I would encourage you to define your initial and final, pause the recording, write it down, then restart it and see if it matches what I did. So our initial is when the driver presses the brake. A little bit of a squeaky marker today. The final is when he stops. So we're interested in knowing what happens when he stops. Now we're curious about whether or not he hits that cross traffic. So that's going to play into what answers that big question, but the final motion really is when does he stop. Okay, now we have to define the world and I'm going to switch marker colors because that was getting a little bit annoying. So. Let's define the world. That means where do we set our origin that everything is relationship to. So here's our object. There's our car. I'm going to set the motion at, sorry, set the origin at the location of the car. And we know up here somewhere is a traffic light and it's defined as nine meters ahead. So it sort of gives us that whole parameter of the world. All right, once we have our world defined, now we make our list, and that's our standard list. So we have initial position, final position, initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, and time. Initial position, where the object is when the motion starts. When he presses on the brakes, we're saying the car is at the origin, at zero. Final position, well, we want to know if he stops in time. We're not sure he's at that 9. We don't know where he is. It's actually not given in the problem. Initial velocity, how fast is the object going when he presses the brake? And the problem tells us it's at 10 meters per second. Final velocity is when he stops at the end of our motion. Well, stopping means he hit 0 meters per second. So we do know the final velocity. The acceleration value is given in the problem at 5 meters per second squared. And now we need to assess that direction. So, he's traveling to the right and he's coming to a stop. He's slowing down. So traveling to the right and slowing down, direction is opposite motion. So the acceleration is negative. And how long does it take him to go through that motion? We don't know. The problem doesn't give it to us. So there's our list of knowns, both implied, like that zero, and given to us in the problem. Now we have to decide what's going to answer the question. What answers the does he stop in time? And that's really about position. What is, it's pink, what is his final position? Is it less than 9 or is it more than 9? So our position, final position, is given to us by the equation x final equals x initial plus v initial t plus 1 half the acceleration times the time squared. So now let's look at our list. X final is a question mark, so that stays its variable. X initial is 0. V initial is 10. T, oh, T is also a question mark, so that remains its variable. Plus 1 half acceleration, negative 5 times our T again squared. So I can't solve this just yet. I don't know T, which means T becomes a variable of interest. So now, in order for us to answer this question, we need t. All right, well, we have another equation to look at. v final 
plus equals V initial plus acceleration times time, times in that equation as well. V final, well that's zero. V initial, 10, plus my acceleration, negative five times T. So I can use this equation to solve for my time. Subtracting 10 from both sides, minus 5 times t, dividing by 5, and we find that t is equal to 2 seconds. So we put that over here in our list. It's in a different color, so it means that we had to calculate it, and now we can use t in our equation. So x final, we'll drop out the 0, 10 times my value of t, plus one half negative five times my t squared. And now I can solve for x final. In solving for x final, we find that it equals 10 meters, which of course is bad. He is going to go past that intersection. So just to do that quick evaluation, 10 meters is a positive value. He was moving to the right. He should end up at a positive value. We're going to compare that 10 to where our stoplight, our cross traffic is, and we see that he exceeds the cross traffic. And as a reminder, we don't always get what we want by going after our initial variable, but it'll always tell us what we need. We need a t, and then we can go back and solve for time and use it in our equation. All right, that's problem A, a little bit more of a challenge than the ones we've had, having to interpret some of these ideas and how we can solve that interpretation and that problem. Nice job.